That's the lineup for round 16 of the British Formula 3 International Series. Oliver Turvey on pole position again, looking to become the fourth double winner of the season. Marcus Eriksson alongside him. Is it time for his first win of the season? Sam Abe won better than his first race qualifying. Can he make it onto the podium? Brendan Hartley, who was second in race one, lines up in fourth place, ahead of the best of the Megals. This time, Nick Tandy is fifth. Sergio Perez and Jaime Aljaswari are sixth and seventh, ahead of Artie Mustin and John Martin and Daniel Campos Hole. And our national class pole sitter again is Jay Bridger. Well, Spa's already had the effect of changing round the order at the top of the British Formula 3 Championship. Can race two do the same? Oliver Turvey on pole. Marcus Ericsson alongside. Could we have another new winner? Oh, Turvey stalled. Turvey barely moves. He's trying to get out of the way. They've all avoided him. Ericsson leads into the first corner. Good avoidance by the dark blue car of Sam Abe, but he clatters into Ericsson. Perez goes through into the lead. And there's trouble behind. That's Mustard and I think Grubmuller. Ericsson back on between the, yes, between the red ball boys in front of Al Jaswari with Hartley in front of him but it is Tandy that leads out of O'Rouge. Tandy's got by Sergio Perez but now with the Mexican driver he's fighting back this is exactly what Oliver Turvey did to Brendan Hartley on the first start and Perez trying to duck down out of the airs team he's comfortably passed and he retakes the lead Wow, great stuff. And look at that on the grass. That is Alger Suari trying to swing round for second place. Can't get through. Stays in front of Ericsson and Oliver Turvey being wheeled back through the gap in the pit wall. And uh, hopefully they'll be able to restart the car. But any chance of a double win, definitely gone. So here's a replay of the start. Then we're on board with Grummelie. You can see the yellow flags. He jinks round the stall, Turvey. Grubmuller, he's got a clear run into the first corner on the inside. Somebody locks up in front of him, but he breaks way too late. Takes out Mustanen and causes all kinds of mayhem behind him. Real unguided missile stuff. We're on board now with Brendan Hartley. We're in fifth position. That's Marcus Ericsson in front, and Hartley should be able to pick him off. Second in race one, don't forget. And he had the fastest lap as well, so Hartley with the quickest car out there. Sergio Perez leads with a Honda engine in his car, the Mercedes-powered. Uh, Miguel of Tandy follows, and Al Jaswari, Ericsson, Hartley, Chilton, and the rest all streaming through. Oh, that is Sebastian Hohenthal diving to the inside of Daniel Campos' hole. They give each other a little bit more racing room. The Spaniard bounces over the kerbs and off the track, and that's Michael Devaney. has not completed a lap yet, so something major has gone wrong with the Miguel. Sergio Perez leads them up to Lake Calm, but Yellow Nose on the inside, Brendan Hartley trying to make a move on Marcus Ericsson's orange machine for fourth. Yes, he's got him up the hill, so he moves up onto the tail of his teammate with Ericsson. And Ericsson now down to fifth position. Hartley in front, Al Jaswari in front of him. Big black clouds on the right, and two Aussies in the pit, Sam Abe, and behind him, John Martin. Here's a replay of Abe's puncture, which may have been a consequence of Grubmuller's uh, lunge at the first corner, perhaps, but whatever. And out of the race is Oliver Turvey. John, what happened? Uh, I'm not sure. I got an OK start. Um, I think I was a long time as a teammate like Atty, and then uh, all of a sudden, I think Grubmuller's just come from nowhere. It's like he didn't even break and just uh, take both of us out in one, uh, in one corner. It's just ridiculous. Did he come into you and then you go into Atty, or what happened? No, no, I was, uh, I didn't touch Atty. I just managed to get around just past him, but uh, Grimmuller was, like, just uh, right over the top of my cockpit there at one stage, and it's just all dark, but it's uh, just, yeah, ridiculous, really. Frustrating end to the race. Yeah, for sure, considering uh, I think we made a few changes this morning that uh, our car was a little bit quicker than yesterday, so, so yeah, who knows? Bad news for John Martin. Good news, though, for Brendan Hartley up into fourth place. Second in race one, brought him up into joint fourth in the championship. Now he's trying to do something about the men in front. Al Jaswari, of course, is our championship leader. And uh, Sergio Perez, who leads the race, is third in the points. So Hartley losing ground to them at the moment. The really impressive performance, to my mind at the moment, though, is Nick Tandy. There's Christian Einar. Uh, gets himself going in the right direction once more. Tandy in a very strong second place and doing everything to hold off the Carlin cars around him. Not bad for a one-car family operation. Hartley 
chasing out Jaswari on the inside up into the bus stop. He's got a good run in him. Can he throw the car at the apex and get in front? Yes, and the second apex. He gives his teammate plenty of room, but he's in front of him. So Hartley up to third place. And Kelvin is making really strong progress. Yeah, he looks he looks threatening, Hartley. That was a great move. He got a fantastic toe. The engine was pulling so many revs there just before he braked. Al Jaswari didn't fight it too hard, but even so, it was very late braking by Hartley, and they pulled it off cleanly without any lockups or battling through the corner. Tandy, as you say, impressive in the Miguel there, a one-car team, and he's up against the might of four-car Carlin team. We've seen how quick they are. They were one, two, three, four in race one, and Einar limps in with his rear wheel towing out. The front one's up in the air, look, but uh, Tandy under pressure now. Yes, this is Brendan Hartley pulling alongside. He's going, look, that's the leader. Just get on with it. They're losing ground fast to Perez, and it's not the usual single-digit indication that drivers give to each other. He wants Tandy to work with him to catch Perez. It's better for both of them if they can do it. And, of course, Al Jaswari and Ericsson will go with him, but Perez has got a big lead. And here's Oliver Oaks, lunches up the inside of Basel Shaban at the bus stop and thinks better of it and cuts straight across. Here is our leader in the national class, that's Steven Guerrero. He's won the second race of the last two race meetings at Thruxton and at Brands. Jay Bridger behind him, then Stefan Wilson. So at the moment, Guerrero, the young Colombian, really finding form in the national class. And on board with Hartley, again chasing Tandy much further along the straight, though, this time as he pulls alongside Kelvin. Yeah, he's got a super toe. That's a clear speed difference. And I think I expect him to be clearly in front. He is. The apex is the right-hander. So that was perfect pass by Hartley. Now he's got to get his head down and chase down Perez in the lead. Well, Perez with the Honda engine, and of course at Monza earlier in the season, he drove away from everybody from a disappointing qualifying, but here looks like the Mercedes may be quicker. Hartley was the quickest car in race one. Oliver Oakes pulling out alongside the national class leader, Guerrero. This is for 11th place, but Guerrero is in the national class, not the championship class. Oli Oakes goes in front, and Jake Bridger closes right up. So there is the national lead battle. First and second, those two green cars, and here is Perez under pressure from Hartley. This is the outright lead battle, and Hartley has coasted right in from behind. He's got a great run on Perez up to the bus stop for the penultimate time. A drop of water on the windscreen, perhaps, and those big black clouds. Let's see what happens on the final lap. Perez has the lead for now. One more time around Spa-Francorchamps. Will they hit a wall of water somewhere halfway around, as you do so often in the Ardennes Forest? Hartley thinks about the inside. No. After the disappointment of being so down at Brands Hatch, he's not taking any silly chances. Tandy's there in third, Al Jaswari fourth, Ericsson fifth, no one else in the race. And the first five are closed right up now as Perez a little bit of lost some pace as he's struggling here because he's got no breathing space, he's got Hartley all over him, but equally the third, fourth and fifth are close enough now. Here's Hartley in a perfect place. We saw him pass Tandy up here, just about the same place. Perez jinxed to the right to block him. Did Hartley lift a bit there? Maybe he did. He seems to have lost some speed, but Hartley's on the outside. I don't think he's far enough in front here to get the lead. Oh, fantastic on the break. He breaks so late there because they were neck and neck. Great move to take the lead. He stayed on the clean side of the track with all the grip on the outside. The racing line paid off for him. Perez was as brave as he dared, but he's lost the lead. Compressed under braking down into the cockpit as his head drops down inside the seatbelts. No matter how tight they are, they can barely stop the drivers moving with the G-forces involved. Hartley now leads on the last lap. Perez has led all the way, except for when Tandy got by him at Eau Rouge on the first lap. There is Nick Tandy in third place, and he looks as though he might be having a sniff of second action as well. Perez is very close. Al Jaswari with the yellow nose, he's very close in fourth as well. I think Ericsson is merely a spectator now. Perez running a little wide there, and I noticed on the onboard with him, his car's moving around a bit underneath him. Maybe the setup not quite right now, the weather's cooled down a bit, but or, or he's worked the tyres too hard trying to get away. But whatever, he's not had an easy ride, although he's now got a bit of a breather. There's only a couple of corners left to the end of the lap. 
And Tandy might be under pressure for that third place he's fought so hard for. He hasn't been on the podium so far this year. Al Jaswari is closing up to the bus stop, and there's only one chance. And Al Jaswari has to throw it up the inside into the bus stop and hope that he can get it stopped. And Tandy knows it, and he's painted to the right-hand side of the road. Nick Tandy defends third place from Jaime Al Jaswari. Is out of the final corner comes Brendan Hartley to take win number four of the season. He's delighted with that. Bounces right back to form. Perez looks thrilled in second ahead of Tandy Al Jaswari and Ericsson. National class. Oh, and that's Jay Bridger in front of Steven Guerrero at the line. He passed him for the win on the last lap here at Spa. Great stuff. Confirmation there, Jay Bridger, the national class winner. Nick Tandy's first ever British Formula 3 podium, a great result. Sergio Perez looked delighted with second, but the man who best combined speed and a cool head, winner, Brendan Hartley. You know, I have to say, all the guys in front of me, they did a fantastic job. Jaime, my teammate, he gave me, he gave me a lot of room and was uh, really, really fair. Tandy was uh, difficult to pass, but uh, full credit to him. You know, I had to work very hard to get past him, but when I did, uh, then I, I showed the, the real speed I had. And, and also Sergio, you know, I have a, I think I have a good relationship with Sergio, and he's, uh, you know, I have to just congratulate him as well because he gave me so much room, and uh, you know, everyone was really fair, and yeah, just a, just such a good race. Thank you.